if you've watched the two previous videos on uh, programming in 2D sketches and then programming in 3D for automation, uh, one of the questions that's come up is, how do I create those custom machining strategies that uh, you show in the videos, things like plasma? Uh, for example, it, we're going to focus on uh, 2D fab cutting, so water jet laser plasma in this episode. But uh, let's go through and I'll show you the basic process of, of how we how we get there and, and what we're doing. So we're gonna start at the beginning. Uh, it's always the easiest place to start. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete these from the previous video that you may have seen. And we'll dump those. And we're gonna start with just a basic two and a half axis feature. So we're gonna do this interactively so you can sort of see how it works. Uh, again, one of the benefits of using the 3D model is if I use a convert to loop, it automatically picks you know, the enclosed boundary because it knows where it's at. Uh, from here, we'll start with what comes by default, which is rough and finish, right? This is what you see when we do milling, and I'll explain a little bit how this works. And then we'll do up to stock to give us our depth. And we have a simple feature that you would see in the my.solidworks.com uh, videos. You may see in the help files. It's, it's real basic in how we do things. So we'll do generate operation plan and we'll do generate toolpath. And you see here, traditionally, if we were milling this, we would come in with the H and we would mill out everything in the inside. And then we would come back and we would do a simple cleanup pass, right? Makes sense for a mill. What we want for 2D fab cutting, though, is we don't want this roughing. What we really want is we just want one pass that goes around the inside of our part, right? So we'll start by deleting the rough for that one feature, and then we'll go into our contour by double click or right click and edit definition. And we're gonna make some changes here. So the first place you go when you're doing fab cutting is we go to our settings tab here and we change the previous allowance to zero. And you may be asking why? Well, the previous lots by default is set to 10 thousandths, right? Because you rough it and then we come in and we clean it up with 10 thousandths, but generally we're using a large end mill. When we're talking 2D fab cutting, you know, laser beam may be 5 thousandths in diameter, plasma may be, you know, 60 thousandths. It just sort of depends upon the machine you're running. But we want this to zero because we only want to have one clean pass around the part. We don't want to step in, we don't want to cut it twice. The second thing we need to look at is when you start talking small tools, by default we're set down, we're set to step down in depth 50% of the diameter. So again, if you're talking a 5,000 end mill, that's a large number of passes that you're going to create. We don't want that. We want one pass that goes around your part. So we're going to change this setting to be the max thickness your machine can cut. And the reason we set it to the max thickness is then when I run my tool paths, if I see multiple passes, I know that part's thicker than what I am actually can cut on my machine. And I use this as a safety check. So when I ran lasers, we, you know, we, we were comfortable up to three quarters of an inch. And I used it as a safety check to make sure we, did, we weren't trying to cut something that was actually designed to be thicker than what the machine can handle. My plasma can do one and a quarter, so that's what we'll set up for one and a quarter. And then the last place we'll go is we'll go to our lead in and lead out. These settings can be set to whatever you want, but depending upon the pierce diameter that you're gonna get with a fab uh, machine, you may wanna move this out further away from the edge of the part so you don't get that mark as it, as it cuts through. So for my lead-in amount, I'm gonna change it to 60 thousandths. Um, I'm not gonna use any overlap on this one. Uh, for arc radius, I'm gonna set it to 0.08 because my beam is 60. And then if I wanted to go 90 or 45 degrees, I can do that. And when I hit okay, you can now see I have a tool path that I want. It's one pass around the part. I have my lead in, lead out, my arc set the way that I want. And from here, I now need to capture those settings that I just created, right? That I want to create that as my standard strategy. So that way going forward, if I were to run feature recognition or just to continue to pick these, I would have a strategy that has all of that operational information set. So how do we do that? We do that by going to the feature type. So we have an irregular pocket here. We right click on that unique feature and we do save operation plan. And when I do save operation plan, I have the ability to overwrite an existing one. So if I'm just doing an update or I can create something brand new. So for our instance, I'm just gonna create a new one in the video here. Uh, 
We'll call it the 3D experience. We'll hit OK. And now it's going to say, OK, I'm capturing some information about this geometry. It's aluminum material because in my stock manager, I have aluminum selected. And then geometry size, how big do I want this to apply to? And what's cool about saving operations is I can, I can change settings per geometry size. So let's say, you know, my lead in and lead out is unique to small parts. I could say, well, if it's within the geometry is within zero to one and three quarter, I want you to use this lead in and lead out. If it's one and three quarter to six, I want you to use this one. For our example, we'll just say, you know, anywhere within 100 inches of work. And then we come back and we say, OK, well, based upon the depth or the thickness of the feature, we can we can also assign it. So if I was doing, you know, six, 60 thou aluminum versus three quarter aluminum, I may want to have different lead in lead out parameters based on thickness as well. For our example, you know, this is a pretty standard uh, setting that I have for my plasma. So we'll just say up to one and a quarter inches thick. This is what I want you to use. So when I hit OK, it actually saves it in the technology database now as the 3D experience. So if I were to create another new uh, two and a half axis feature and we go to pocket and I pick my geometry here, let's say I pick a couple of them and then we'll go to our end condition. We'll be up to stock and then we'll do the 3D experience as a option. And when I do 3D experience as an option, you can see that now it's applied those rules and settings. So from here, we'll do generate operation plan and we do generate tool path. You'll see that my lead in and lead out settings are made. It only has one contour profile and, that, and everything works the way that it's supposed to. So this is a quick, easy way to teach it as you go and save multiple options. To take that a step further, I can go into my default feature strategies here and you can see that I have a lot of these set to plasma. So by default, these are the ones that it's going to use. Well, let's say, for example, I now want the default to be the 3D experience. I can check that, hit apply, and then when I run feature recognition, it'll automatically use these as the default strategies. So that's how you can speed up your automation for uh, a specific part. And these are dynamic per part, so you can, um, you can make lots of changes per part as you machine. It gives you that customization as you automate. The new thing in 2019 is inside of the technology database, I can map specific strategies per machine. So if I go to my default feature strategies, you can see that I have one that's just default and generic. And then I also have one that applies to my plasma. So if I pick plasma, you can see these are all the default strategies that happen. So if I look at my milling machines, I have one for my Matsura that I run, which has unique stuff for my milling. And then I have a machine called plasma. When I select my plasma machine inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM, what it does is it identifies the machine and then it grabs the specific uh, post processor, so the GoFab post processor. And then on top of that, it looks at the default feature strategies and says, okay, once plasma is selected, here are all the default settings you wanna run. So if you look at my video on 3D fab cutting, I selected the machine, I picked the stock, and then when I ran automatic feature recognition, it, it used these default settings and picked my plasma routine, which my plasma routine is find the geometry, then use a 0.06 end mill to get my offset, do one full depth of cut pass with a specific lead in and lead out. And that's how the automation is created. And so what's cool in 2019 is as I select my unique machines here, I'm not just picking a machine and a post processor. I can now also define the unique machining strategies that need to be made for the automation. So it's taking this setting here one step further to be automatically defined. So hopefully this helps teach a little bit about how save operation plan works.